grab a bottle or snap a tab. It's time for Antebrewum, South Georgia Beer Report. South Georgia's first craft beer podcast with Ryan and Danny. This month, Ryan and Danny talk to Armadillo Brewing Company, who plan to open in Kingsland, Georgia. They talk about their future plans, sample some of their beer, and put them through a rigorous round of Cask Me Another. Welcome, everybody, to episode 10 of Antebrewum South Georgia Beer Report. I'm Danny. And I'm Ryan. And we are here today in beautiful Valdosta, Georgia, with uh, a couple of guests that we are excited to have on the show today. We have Zach and Paul from Armadillo Brewing Company out of Kingsland, Georgia. So, guys, how we doing? Pretty good. Well, thanks for making the trip up, and uh, we're excited to talk to you about your your, uh, beer company and... First, as always, Danny, what you drinking? It is Tick Day Central. I don't have anything necessarily cool or local, just beers I haven't had before. So I have a Left Hand Braveheart Nitro, a uh, Scottish Ale from them. It's not bad. How about you, Ryan? I have the one of the most stupidly named beers I've had in a long time. <laughs> well, t- in fairness, it's a stupidly named baseball team. <laughs> the beers after the, but it's Definitely. pretty good. It's the Savannah Banana Beer, named after the uh, the minor league baseball team out of Savannah, Savannah Bananas. And what is the brewery? It is service. Service brewery. Service out of So you have kind of a South Georgia beer, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're military guys, and yep. you guys are saying right before yep. that you know you guys are both. Uh, All from I can the military. think of is Savannah Bananas. <laughs> coming me down the stairs. <laughs> This is the greatest. It's can a, ever it's life. a, it's a memorable. <laughs> and for those watching at home, it's a very memorable can. So yes. I'll show for the video peeps. I don't even like sports, and I want to get one of their jerseys now. Like. I know, I know. <laughs> There's a team in Montgomery called the Montgomery Biscuits. Oh. I've always wanted to get a Montgomery Biscuits. Uh, there's a bunch of silly ones. Jacksonville the just Jack- they're, they're Jacksonville. all silly because that's jumbo what they do. shrimps. Jumbo shrimps. Yeah. And uh, what is it? The Jackson- jumbo shrimp. Jacksonville jumbo shrimps. Jumbo shrimp. Scram- <laughs> and uh, one in New Orleans just changed to like the New Orleans baby cake, king's cakes or whatever, yeah, or baby that? cakes oh. or something like that. I was going to say king cake makes sense. Sweet something though. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Paul's got the uh, Savannah banana as well. And what did you have, Zach? I had the uh, the vanilla cream ale. I, uh, my, my was, was Thomas Creek. Thomas yeah, Creek. Thomas yeah. Creek. Stillwater Thomas vanilla cream ale. Not to be confused with Stillwater the brewery. I've got to keep those things straight. Yeah. So uh, who are we thanking this month? Who are our sponsors? Helping keeping this. Uh, well, we didn't have uh, beers this time around because we didn't want to bother them since we're doing podcasts back to back. But as always, thanks to Five Points Fine Wine and Spirits. Again, the seasons are changing. We're getting deep into summer beer, so there's a ton of new stuff there right now. Check them out. And always, as always, thanks to Daniel Opal of Opal Designs for the logo. Um, you can see that on our t shirts and website and yeah. iTunes. It's a good logo. Neither one of us is wearing it today. I, coincidentally, <laughs> Whoa. am wearing a banana t-shirt <laughs> so from uh, Red Door Records. I didn't know. Um, cinema, which is downtown, kind of close to where you yep. guys are, but they're cool. And I am, they get uh, sell hot dogs, and they have like a mini mini the- theater yep. where they show stuff and get, sell records, and I'm a big records fan. We did so. a, a live podcast. Yeah. Got I'm beer. repping my uh, Brackish, Brackish Beer Company shirt. Yeah. And you guys By the way, John, sweet yep. shirts. Yeah, work yeah, shirts. Yeah, 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 very good. By the very way, John, good. if you're listening, um, there were a lot of jokes <laughs> about Brackish Beer Company on the Reddit post about our podcast. Yeah. Do they only make Amber Gozas? <laughs> they, a you lot of people have to make an Amber Goza. You got to own it now. Oh, a lot man. of people made the same joke that I made at the beginning of the podcast, which is Brackish Beer. That sounds gross. <laughs> Hey, you got to you got to you got to own your name and make it. I can only imagine what they're just making love. <laughs> <laughs> Moving so, right along. All right. So from uh, Brackish to Armadillo. Yep. So uh, just down the road, I gather. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Kingsland is. Tell people who don't know where Kingsland is where it is. So uh, Kingsland is right off Exit Three on I ninety five. It's one of the first stops between uh, the Kingsland, St Mary's, and Kings Bay area right there. We're uh, we're both in the Navy, so we're stationed there. I'm originally from Miami, Paul. From Savannah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's with the Savannah Bananas. Home of the Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we, we both joined the Navy, and we, uh, we're both facing getting out at the end of this year. And we're, one day, I, uh, I was talking with a, uh, a buddy who we used to work with. He, uh, 
he kind of got me started on this. I, uh, I was teaching him how to brew, and uh, in between beers, he just kind of put it in my head, we should start a, a brewery. Yeah. And, you know, we had a big, big laugh about it and had a, had a great big time, and then, like, I sobered up a few days later. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, seriously, we should open a brewery. And uh, I started doing research into the laws, because I knew at the time, Georgia laws were all weird. You couldn't serve beer in a brewery. Mandatory middleman. And... Uh, the the bill was up for change that was the end of last year so everything had just been announced that they were going to start pushing this and it was like this this almost seems a little too convenient and uh yeah he ended up uh unfortunately transferring he's out in ohio now so uh yeah he he's no longer with the company but paul jumped on board and he's been handling our social media (laughs) and i've been teaching him how to brew and all that stuff so very good. So tell uh, tell us about Armadillo Brewing Company. Where what stage are you guys at? What's the future plans? That kind of stuff. So we have a lot of our stuff actually set up, and in terms of uh, the business and the planning side, we have everything organized. We're uh, we're in the second half of our fundraising. So we're doing everything we can trying to get money in, but we've been doing uh, outreach events with the community yeah. uh, through the church. Is actually the uh, the church in Kingsland has been one of our biggest backers. Very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're we're all into giving back to the community. We want to do as much as we can to uh, to kind of assist with uh, helping people out. Yeah, and uh, things like that. And uh, so we've we've kind of finished off on there. Right now, we're working on the uh, the Kingsland legislature. Nobody has ever tried to make alcohol. <laughs> in Kingsland, so there's no such thing as an alcohol production license. Well, I think there's funny. some crazy backwoods guys with bathtubs yeah. that well, yeah. Yeah. disagree with that statement. <laughs> this is, uh, Legally. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is uh, you know, part of the reason why we're doing the podcast. It's almost yep. like uh, every new brewery we bring in from South Georgia says the same thing. Yep. yep. Georgia Beer Company, Brackish, now Armadillo. It's like, well, nobody's ever manufactured alcohol yeah. in our town. And so we have to like write the laws basically. And it was it was a lot to do with the the original law, the state bill eighty five overturned that uh, mm-hmm. you couldn't sell on site. And uh, I mean that law dates all the way back to the nineteen twenties. So it was about time for it to to go away. But uh, yeah, we uh, September first. Yeah, can't wait. We're excited. So our market research the thirty seventh per capita for uh, beer production, and the only reason we're that high is we got sweet water and terrapin. Right. Yeah, oh yeah. So. Well, you know, you touched on something as far as beer being good for the community. You know, we we all know about, you know, alcohol and the reputation it has. But I think breweries, especially having local breweries where people can kind of hang out, have a couple beers, have a good time. And, like, kind of bring that spirit of community, especially with you guys having the base so close. And, you know, being right right close to Florida and the beaches and stuff. It's good to have that sort of, you know, community brewery. And so it's pretty exciting that you guys are looking to, to um, kind of fill that need in that community. So what what's your vision as far as the focus of, are you going to be kind of a brewery that sells more on site? Do you want to distribute? Where are you guys heading with it all? I guess in the beginning, we're going to aim for on site. Mm-hmm. And then slowly we're going to roll it into getting distribution around town and then to Georgia and then hopefully nationwide. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Well, I think that's the, that's the key is if you can make the beer that people – want in your town it's easier to kind of come out from there what do you see as some of your uh, what are some of your flagship beers or what do you see as what type of beers you're going to be putting out uh so we got our our four big ones our uh, our core four that we call Mm -hmm. uh we have our uh our golden lager which is a uh kind of a a different twist on an american lager so uh, american lager being a little bit of corn a little bit of wheat very light drink it's anywhere from about four to five percent alcohol we tried to keep it a, a session drink so something you can enjoy out in the summer and uh which incidentally has proven very successful for brackish yep. their, mm-hmm. their brackyard ale yep. mm-hmm. in your guys's uh part of the country well anywhere in south georgia <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes perfect i mean sense. i think yeah, having a light session bowl. I mean, yeah. you you almost have to at this point. Yeah. It's it's to a lot of what we noticed is there's a, a kind of a an unfair stipulation behind craft beer, an unfair stereotype of that it's just a, a bunch of the like you know beer snobs sipping it and commenting on different notes. And yeah, sure, that's that's one or two guys in the bar, but you know the vast majority, <laughs> Danny and me. <laughs> <laughs> the vast majority of craft beer drinkers we've noticed at least yeah. with you know on time in the military base they're guys who just want something a different option other than your your generic Absolutely. you know bar tap ones. 
So we're, we're just offering a, a nice, light, low alcohol drink that uh, has a little bit fresher ingredients and a little bit more flavor, and we're, we're trying to keep it around the same price and all that, so it's not too shocking to the, the checkbook or anything like that. So, yeah. so a little birdie told me uh, behind the scenes that there's a funny or cool story about where you guys got your brewery name from. You share that with us. <laughs> a little birdie, it sounds like you're talking to my wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she, she handles a lot of my scheduling stuff. But uh, no, the, uh, so the name comes from uh, my buddy Nick, the guy that I was talking about who, who used to brew with me. Um, Nick had three or four kids and uh, my apartment is not really set up for kids. So we'd go out to one of the local parks and we'd go out and brew there and uh, just kind of have a nice afternoon out, throw the football around. And uh, on the day I was teaching them how to make our red ale, another one of our, our core four, and uh, we we're standing oh, around. We got so off topic. Yeah. We do that a lot. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll swing back. We'll get back. We'll get back. Eventually. In like okay. 20 minutes, I'll be like, and what are the other two? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, we were, we were just working on that kind of stuff, and uh, that was when he, he first kind of implanted, you know, incepted the idea of opening a brewery in this area. Um, we are standing around, we are going into our final, you know, final parts of the boil, and we look over, and we thought it was like two or three, like, small animals, small little cats or dogs playing out. It was three armadillos just <laughs> rolling around in the grass. And like him and I had both been there for about four or five years down in Kingsland, and we had never seen like armadillos doing anything other than being root killed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's but, what they're uh, best at. Yeah, yeah. But uh, here's three of them. I don't know what they were doing. They might have been having the time of their lives. It might have been the biggest armadillo fight in history for territory. <laughs> but and uh, I'm sure they were fighting. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. He, was, <laughs> he was talking. Uh, Three of them, I mean. But uh, so as him and Is I were talking, how the armadillos in Kingsland roll. <laughs> armadillos <laughs> roll. Oh, good <laughs> joke. <Nice. laughs> but uh, I was gonna say maybe they got a nip of some beer and they were yeah, just, they're just in yeah. the area. But uh, yeah, we were, we watched them and the kids were out chasing them around. And the armadillos didn't like that too much. But uh, <laughs> yeah, when we tossed around two other ideas, we wanted to do Rebel Brewing, which was already taken, and then uh, Gilded Brewing, but that was kind of a little too hoity-toity thing. It was not our style. <laughs> and uh, he just he just kind of went, well, what about armadillo brewing? I'm like, yeah. So we, we started building around that name. And like I said, after he transferred in, in homage to, to Nick and all the brewing that him and I did, because we ended up brewing for a while and, you know, entering and perfecting all of the recipes really? together. How does it feel to be second Becky? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't bother me none. <laughs> He's got the better hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I forget, so we said we got the, the blonde. Yep. And we got the red ale. Red, red, red ale. Yep. What, what other the colors other do you like besides red? None. Red's red the best for color. Beer? Red, red, for blonde. <laughs> I'm just joking. Brunette ale. What are the other red. two beers? <laughs> are all four of your core beers named after colors? No. 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 One of them's named after a dog. So. All there right, there you go. I mean, we're in a Georgia. Black lab? Uh, oh. No. No, it was. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go on to the, the next three. Just, just ignore Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to the guy with the giant banana on his shirt. <laughs> hey, it's, it's apropos today. We're drinking banana beers. I got a... Well, I drank a banana beer. Now I'm on to a hoppy side. A tree horn. Tree horn. Another Georgia, Georgia entity. All right, anyways. The, but, other, uh, the other two core beers. The other two, we, uh, we do the, the Georgia Bulldog Grapefruit IPA. Uh, it uh, originally started as a, uh, a standard IPA. I personally love the hoppy West Coast style, you know, super heavy hop head beers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're trying to go for something like that to kind of maximize that end, that end of the scale. And uh, there's a little fruit stand right around the uh, right around the corner from where I live, the Tomato Camden uh, Camden Tomato House. And uh, they have a whole bunch of fruits and all that, and grapefruits and oranges. And, and so we're like, you know what, why don't we throw a couple locally grown grapefruit in there? And uh, it ended up coming out far less hoppy than I expected, but absolutely delicious. It was closer to a, a grapefruit shandy with, nice. uh, with how much we were throwing in there. And again, only about 5 or 6%, and it was perfect for like a, a nice day out fishing or 
on the golf nice. course. So. It sounds like a good South Georgia beer. I think. Yep. Use use what you have around you. Exactly. And that's the type of beer, like you said, you might not get the beer snobs yeah. super excited about it, but I think I think fruited IPAs. Yeah, good. fruited IPAs right are now. good. And, and <laughs> but you know, but it's I guess the point is, average Joe beer drinker is going to yeah. like it. You know, you know, people who are into beers are going to like it. Absolutely. All right, and what was the fourth one? Uh, the fourth one is the one named after the dog. The okay. uh, the harmonious stout, uh, one of our okay. uh, our our little one of our little. <laughs> I would have dogs. not guessed harmonious stout was named after a dog. Yeah. Well, the, I assumed you meant the Georgia Bulldog. <laughs> yes. No, no, that was <laughs> named after the type. This one's actually named after our. We call her the lead brew dog. She's uh, <laughs> she's in charge of spent grain management. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, all of our spent grain. We try to recycle as much as possible, so whatever doesn't get eaten by Harmony the brew dog gets. Uh, Sent off to the local farmers cool. to uh, yeah cool. to be fed. Just to. don't use any pre-hopped wort. Or pre-hopped, yeah, uh, grains. No, no. We uh, dogs are like uh, allergic to hops or something. Or, Real? Yeah, the alpha. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yep. But uh, yeah, no. We uh, we named it after her because that one was her her favorite. It is a. <laughs> You like a, make treats out of it or something, or she just go to town on the grains? Uh, every so often, like when I take samples to try and figure out where the, the word's going and how things are going with the brew session, I hate just pouring it down the drain, so I pour it into a little bowl, and that's the one nice. she yeah. makes the biggest mess on. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, and you can see the little drink spray from her. <laughs> so, yeah, we named that one after her. Nice. So. And that's kind of a... The, just a standard darker stout, or yep, it's uh, a chocolate oatmeal. So uh, we've we've added just enough oatmeal to kind of give it that nice mouth feel, a little bit of a, a bitter oatmeal, and then uh, we use some darker grains. And then towards the end, during the uh, the boil, we add a little bit of uh, chocolate, a little bit of cocoa to it. So sounds like something I can get behind. Yeah, that one. Really- I was gonna say that one's about or eight or nine percent. So that's for the the experienced craft brewers. There you uh, go. Yep. You know, a little bit, a little bit heftier. Yep. And what about outside the core four? Are you focusing on getting those right now, or are you doing any sort of experimentation? So uh, I've been working. We we have those core four set up and those recipes finalized, but we've got about two or three other recipes I've kind of been working on since I just basically toss ideas around. We uh, since brewing originated with uh, the founding of this country, a lot of our, our founding fathers were brewers, and we're both military. We want to kind of harken back to that. So there's a couple of uh, porters from the 1700s we found recipes for, and uh, we've been working on trying to find those. And then uh, my wife, who actually has a bachelor's degree in microbiology, and she specializes in yeast research, is uh, working on trying to, to perfect a, a yeast strain so that we can try and brew something closer to the 20, 25 percent alcohol. And uh, wow. yeah, we want to that's a uh, fortuitous uh, a marriage of a brewer and a yeast yeah a yeast scientist. It, it didn't start that way when we we first got together. <laughs> you told her, "Look, you're gonna have to study yeast." Uh, no. <laughs> she she was going into veterinary, and I was going into uh, computer programming. And then, yeah, my uh, my buddy, like I brewed on weekends as a hobby, and my buddy Nick kind of steered us both towards brewing. She got interested in microbiology from the yeast I'd bring home, and. I started taking it seriously as a potential career path. So very cool. Another cool thing she could do is um, isolate local yeast for you guys to mm-hmm. use, mm-hmm. catch it in the air, or get it off a plant. Yep, mm-hmm. breweries have been doing that. That's a, that's a very unique thing, though. You know, yeah. that's really cool. Um, changing subjects a little bit. What is? Uh, tell us about the Kingsland, Georgia beer scene. If there is such a thing. Yeah, I mean. There really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, there are only two. Us and Brackish, and then they're the small local pubs. Are there any good bars or stores or where you guys go to get craft beer or hang out? Or If we went down there, it would be a good place to hang out, or you guys fly down to Jacksonville? Most of the time, we just go to Jacksonville. <laughs> for the, for That's the understandable. There's a lot of good breweries there. The yeah. craft beer scene, there's... We, we have the bars and all that, like all the infrastructure is set to market a craft brew company in St. Mary's, Kingsland, Kings Bay. Like we have all the, we have about three or four bars, small little towns, but no no craft beer there. I mean, the, the closest we can get are some of the larger distributors within Georgia, so. Gotcha. Well, you guys in Brackish can change that. Yeah. That's what we're looking for, because yep. we really, 
but we're we're kind of a we got some good uh, beer bars and some great some yeah. great beer stores, but you know we're still we need those breweries. Yeah, and, and I mean I think you guys get your beers, you guys could get it to Valdosta. I mean, yeah. there's definitely yeah, a scooped local up. market. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, people ask just. We talk about this in lots of episodes too. People just ask constantly for local beer, just constantly. And uh, South Georgia basically doesn't have any at this point. I guess Brackish is the first one, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, Georgia Beer Company, Big Oak, Armadillo. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully, the next. Well, that's a good All question. Like, what's like, what's your? And I know this is an impossible question to answer, but what's your vision of like? when we can go down i know we can go down to special events to get yeah. beers but when do you guys see you guys actually opening doors or you know so hard opening date we're trying pushing for september the first wow as soon as that law yep, changes fantastic. we want to be open yep that's amazing you guys have any location or anything in mind already we have a, a couple places scouted out between uh st mary's kingsland kind of area we've uh we've got a few areas that uh we're working with the uh, the city of kingsland we're trying to work in as much hand in hand with them to figure out where uh, they would prefer us, so to speak. And uh, yeah, basically we just made a list of about four or five places that uh, would fit our needs. And then we're, we're taking it to the board. I actually have a meeting with, with some of uh, the city of Kingsland tomorrow to try and straighten all that stuff awesome. out. And uh, as soon as that happens, we expect to, to pretty much break next speed, just order all our equipment, get everything start started and going and nice that's awesome yep. they've been pretty receptive to it overall oh yes yes the uh the city of kingsland has been more than more than fair in in supporting us they've uh they've done everything they can to to try and get us in they know that george is behind in the times in this and uh yeah they 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 want to be as accommodating as possible because they know this this can help with the the local industry a lot. Oh, so, totally. Oh, yeah. well, Tax taxes, dollars, tourists. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, people, sailors, yeah, Navy yeah. men, they're going to drink. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes. I mean, people are going to drink the beer. Yes. You might as well be making money off it and having support local guys. Um, and so that's that's awesome. So what can what can our listeners or viewers do to to help you guys get going? We're just supporting you in some way. <laughs> So uh, we've been working on setting up an online store that should be uh, going up in the next few days. We can buy some of the uh, merchandise that you guys see, the hats, the glasses. Very cool. Yeah, shameless self-promotion here. <laughs> that, is part of the, that is part of the gig. And, uh, and you guys brought one of your beers for us to try too, right? Yes, we have the, uh, the golden lager. We have a cellar age, slightly aged version of it. But uh, yeah, we'll be uh, firing that up. And uh, like I said, we'll be going to... Uh, What's it called? Going to investors to try and work on uh, getting our final, our second half of the funding so that we mm-hmm. can finish this out. And uh, yeah, we, we expect good things. We've been gathering good data. And, like, I think, yeah, I think George is ready, especially with that law change. It's sort of like the whole climate of, okay, we can have breweries and these small little local breweries can pop up and do some good for the communities. And we, I think it's like a switch change and people are willing to kind of take go out on a limb and help out so that's good that you guys are are stepping on the throttle so to speak and getting that done so well uh well danny's getting the samples one thing that we often ask is like what's what's the beer that got you into craft beer got you into brewing <laughs> uh, for me it was actually one of his good, good. i was uh, asking questions like do you have a facebook do you have a website uh-huh. the answer was no I was like, Nick was already gone. I was like, well, I can help you out with that. I know that kind of thing. So yeah. it's like, and then I joined. That's good. <laughs> and that's good. We, that's we good. dragged them in. For, uh, for me, um, I mean, I was always kind of raised around it. My dad, I remember finding the, uh, the, the Arrogant Bastard by Stone back when they used to brew it. Yep. Uh, yeah, there from the car ride two and a half hours does that <laughs> but uh so it's always kind of around it but uh i think going back was the severe sierra nevada ruthless that they used to do the ipa thank you i remember that beer yeah yeah that they was, still do that one no uh there's been talk that they may or may not bring it back under a different name with a slightly thank different you. style but i've uh i probably check probably about once every other month to see if there's any way to to get it and I mean, it was just one of those where, where I sat down and drank a bottle 
and it was just like, man, there's there's so much more to beer than I realized. Yeah. Here. So. I think Sierra Nevada is a um, a lot of people that was kind of like their gateway beer into craft beer. Yep. They had good distribution and it's great beer in its own right. Yes. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of people that's one of the first. I know for me that's one of the first probably craft beers I had too. I think I've talked about how Fat Tire was kind of all of a sudden the Denver where I grew up, Fat Tire was popping up. Yeah. Like, what is the beer? So I don't drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us more uh, what this is again. So this is going to be the uh, Golden Sun light lager. It's uh, closer to a California common or a steam lager. So we actually warm lager it, and uh, then we uh, cold separate it. So it has a little bit of a corn flavor mm -hmm. and a little bit of a lager flavor, but it's nothing too serious. It's, uh, it's only about 10 to 12 IBUs. In, uh, yeah, it's very light. Yes. It, uh, it's typically, now this one's been cellared, and we noticed that it actually lost a little bit of its sweetness over time. It does tend to be sweeter when, uh, when first run off the line. But uh, we're, like I said, we're experimenting with the aging. We already have a barrel set up that uh, we're going to be filling as, you know, day one. First batch of beer. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. So we uh, ever ever experimenting for you don't get too I mean I've seen a few, but you don't get as many barrel loggers, yeah. light and long beers. I mean you yeah. see a little bit more, um, but you don't get as many. So people barrel each everything these days. Yeah. I remember we we did our making trip, we had a rum barrel aged English mild ale. Yeah, it was that that Ohama. Ohama. Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Omaha. Hey, Manning. Omaha. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that joke. I get jokes. <laughs> but, I got that one. Yeah. Very, very crisp. Yep. Very light. Yeah. No, it would fit in perfectly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, And I could see how a little sweetness would help help with that, but yep. it's uh, this is definitely something you can go into a bar and... Uh, and somebody could grab a, a pint of this and go, go to town. Be nice. Too. What was the ABV on it? Uh, this one, this batch was actually about four point eight. Was uh, our final calculation on it? Okay. So a little on the heavier side, but only yeah. for this type. Yeah, yeah. for the. It'd be uh, yeah. nice to go like in town, for instance. It'll it'll be nice someday to go to like, uh, you know, I'm trying not to pick a craft beer place. Let's so say go to Fabulous Pizza, and they're always going to have Bud Miller Yingling. Yep. But then if they also have Armadillo, yep, and and uh, Brackyard Ale and St. George Beer Company Blonde or something. I mean, yes, yep. those places don't have that stuff on tap. They're crazy. Yep, and I mean, you go to um, Jacksonville. It's to the point now where you you almost can't go in a restaurant that doesn't have local beer right, or a yeah, dive bar, yeah. or even Tallahassee. I mean, they're behind Jacksonville, but Proof has made a crazy yeah. effort. I've seen them post things where like. They have their flagship pale ale and mango wit beer on tap at a Thai restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. See, so I mean, even there, I it's people picking, want I think the it's local picking beer. Up. Yeah, I mean, I would like to go. I would, I would like this to go, for sure. Oh yeah. yeah, and I would like to go to a pizza pizza place or a, and someplace where I was getting something spicy and a grapefruit IPA would be like yeah. Yeah, perfect for oh yeah Thai food or something like that. You know, pizza and beers like spaghetti and meatballs, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's. that's but I think you know this. This is the sort of beer to, to get that going with, and it's good to have a good core. Like you guys go and then kind of expand out from there and do your seasonal. And yeah, you know if you if you get pretty good crews running in through your your brewery and stuff like that, you know you can do those little batches, one off stuff like that, mm -hmm. and get experiment. Or you can take this and like you said, barrel age it or add yeah. fruits or different. I mean. We, uh, any stuff you can do with a good base beer. We're experimenting with a, uh, a slight blueberry flavor. It's it's difficult to not overpower the natural lager yeah, oh flavor. Yeah. But uh, our ultimate goal is, like you said, is, is we want to show people, because there's such a, a stereotype behind the craft brew scene, that it's it's not about the this, you know snob beer snobs. It's it's about the just drinking good beer, and that we, we call it the gateway, uh, the gateway beer. And it's just kind of... Well, even Sweetwater has, uh, you know, they do these... Cucumber saisons, yeah. and double IPAs, and Wookie double Imperial Hoppy <laughs> Red, yeah. but they make their money because they make 420. Yeah, yeah, because they sell 420. Well, there are people like us who are like they'll get, they have those mixed twelves that have, you know, their IPA, their 
you know, pineapple, whatever, there. 420. And then they'll have a weird thing like that cucumber saison. And then a one beer in it is the special thing. Yeah. Got to have that one beer because we need well, all the Georgia beers we can get. The so most, buy a 12 pack. <laughs> the most recent. Not 420 or any of those are wrong. I mean, they're fine. The most recent one was a Mexican lager, which was fine. But the, the special beer in the one before that was a Sweet. mosaic IPA that was awesome. It was really good. Yep. Like one of the best beers I've ever had from Sweetwater, yeah. which was which was random. Anyway, before we jump into our next segment, what's uh, one more thing or last thing you'd like to remind listeners about Armadillo Brewing Company? One last thing? Yeah. Huh. You repeat think? something you already said. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole South Georgia listening. Oh, it's dude. usually stumps. Yeah, people. whole yeah, South yeah, Georgia yeah. beer drinking. Last week, yeah, we do uh, need to kind of like. Get more to the coast. I think we focused more on Valdosta, but with the last two episodes, we're heading. It's you know, it's it's yeah. the summer. We're heading to the coast. We're yeah. making recently. Well, yeah. And it, yeah. I mean, we're we're following where the beer. I mean, you guys are where the beer beer is. So yeah, yeah. For now, we uh, like I said, keep an eye open for us. We're uh, we're pretty active now on Facebook with uh, with the Armadillo Brewing Company. Now that we brought Paul on board, <laughs> so uh, Facebook good. still good. confuses me. I don't. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, I know you had a special event like what a couple weeks ago. Yep. Is there any of those in the near future? And remember, this may go out in like mid June. Well, maybe yeah. not. But anything we'll in the see. next Depends month on what or our two, podcast allows, we can so. kind of or just keep an eye on Facebook and see if you're going to be doing something. So we're aiming for the uh, the last weekend of the month. We're uh, we're setting up. I got a, another brew day coming up, and we've got another one. We're always always brewing. Always got another batch going. And uh, those are are all set up to be our free samples until we can finalize all the legal side. We we're more than happy to have people out and let them try our beer. We, uh, we the only thing we actually sell is merchandise, Sweet. and uh, we use that as uh, data gathering. So I mean, we're we love to give feedback, love to get people to try our beer as much as possible. And like I said, September first, we want to kick open the doors, and we're we're looking at 250, 300 gallon system. Like we're we're going big. Nice. So very good. Very good. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So. Like Armadillo Brewing Company on Facebook, mm-hmm. and that will be the best way to keep up with what's yeah. going on. Like them on Facebook, uh, right. and if, they, if every anything goes on, we'll, we'll, we always and tend to, to you guys you whenever you, doing. yeah, it, in case we don't see it, if you don't see that we've uh, shared something, especially on Facebook, uh, send us a message or just send me a message on my personal page, and we'll uh, make sure to uh, post the events on Ants Brewing too. Okay. Yeah. Facebook yep. is where we get most of our interactions, but we do have a following on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. 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 All right, so it's time for the V Town Beer Sightings, which is a segment I made up because we didn't have the uh, the quick review. Oh, I totally, <laughs> I totally <laughs> scrolled right past that. That means everybody has to kill their. Um, yeah, everybody oh, kills. I'm their... slow as usual. <laughs> kill at least one of your glasses. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> anything. Uh, well you, guys, well, you guys were just at the pub. Did you guys see anything there? Oh, they were at your, the uh, cafe. Cafe. Yep. Cafe. Did you see any uh, beers, anything unusual, anything you want to tell the uh, beer drinking audience about? Uh, nothing really felt, unusual. You know, I felt yeah. bad, Brian, because I went to the pub yesterday specifically to get the ticks, and then I walked over to cafe and walked in and looked at the tap list, and they were like, sit wherever you want. And I was like, we might not be staying. <laughs> they didn't have that anything on tap. You were a crap. You're oh. They didn't have anything on tap that I hadn't had. They had plenty of yeah. good stuff. But, uh, so I left. <laughs> but the cafe did have um, Wrecking Bar on tap last week, which is epic. Yeah. There's been some cool things popping up. Like I said, uh, we had the Founders Doom hit town. That's the, the uh, Imperial they have more IPA. More they have some. They still have some at five points. Um, Craft on draft had uh, penultimate push on tap. Um, there's just been just a. There's just been a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, if you this is just hear our, this live or in a few days. Um, speaking of Georgia beers, uh, Blue Pub has two Arches Brewing Company beers on tap right now. They're double IPA and they're Hefeweizen. Rough and ready, double IPA. <laughs> And the, <laughs> I didn't pick the name. I just chose the inflection. Yeah, you, you chose the squirt after it too. Right, <laughs> ready. <laughs> and their Queen's Vice. Queen's Vice. Queen's Vice. And what are we pouring up here? This, this is, is something I got from Craft on Draft. Orpheus, yesterday. again and again, uh, pineapple sour. You gotta kill that if you want some. Yeah, we actually. Uh, 
We're looking at uh, one of the local... Craft on Draft is awesome if you guys have some free time after this. Oh, it's absolutely. worth yeah. popping up there. Always free time. Yeah. Especially for beer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're stopping by. They do growlers, but you can also uh, get flights, or um, they yeah. can serve you, I think, 12 ounces is the law in a glass. So, like, they have snifters. You can't yeah. like, get a pint, but... Okay. They got all sorts of interesting stuff. But, uh, yeah, we're actually looking at some of the... Uh, fair the, share of this? The Orpheus stuff. When uh, we were at one of the uh, just random liquor store looking at six packs, we saw it. Like, yeah, that looks yeah. interesting. Do you get much of that in Kingsland? Uh, the craft beer? Or so, the Orpheus or, yeah, just in general? So there is uh, there is one little liquor store in uh, on the Kingsland side-ish that uh, he does do some craft beer, and it's usually by request. So uh, I, I've noticed it's about me and five or six of the, the other guys from the Navy that uh, kind of got in on good terms with the guy and so we we kind of run what's what's going on with the craft yeah beers. that's a good thing though <laughs> well if you guys are going up if you're going to go up to craft on draft which you you really should if you have the time yeah. you're five points. go to five points okay. five points fine wine and spirits is right by them okay and it's by hands down the best craft beer selection in town i think i was just there today and i think they they have like Six to eight different kinds of Orpheus six packs right now. Yeah, those are tons, awesome. tons of Georgia beers, all kinds nice. of good stuff. Yeah, Tom does a good job keeping keeping it rotated through. And we it. yell at them to get stuff all the time, <laughs> and they do. They do. They they do. The best. They have a, a one of their managers is an awesome uh, lady named Nancy, and I Facebook message her like any time of the day, <laughs> and usually she will immediately um, call Tom, the owner, or call the sales rep and say. That they have it in stock or they don't, and they'll keep their eye out for it. I mean, yeah, there is an awesome place. It is. There, it, I feel like the Valdosta beer scene's been been getting better and better, and people yeah. are people are making their voices heard, which is yeah. what it's all about. Heck so, yeah! Shall we? Let's do it. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment: Cast Me Another, where we ask smart beer people dumb beer questions. We're getting this down. <laughs> or something. This this Mark. month's round with Armadillo Brewing Company, All right. Zach and Paul. So basically the idea is, well you, if you listen to the Brackish one, you kind of know. Yep. But uh, you just, uh, off the top of your head, one of you, both of you, just fire off your answers. Don't think oh, too hard about it. <laughs> don't, don't think this, hard this at all. This could go dark very fast. Okay. <laughs> Especially for Navy people. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I did not know that about you guys when I wrote this, but it's interesting. Because the first question is, what's the best beer to drink on a Russian nuclear submarine? <laughs> and what's the best beer to drink on an American submarine? Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, I know back when I was, when I was on there, since, uh, yeah, big Just surprise. Just to be clear, right? the American one, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Make it sure. Oh, well, there, there yeah, are some can... American riders who end up going out on, on other countries' boats. Oh, okay. but, uh, really lucky ones. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the American boats, we don't carry any beer or alcohol. But uh, we, we did used to have a guy who would uh, go out there and he'd bring those uh, the Coors Light near beers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they had the same labeling as a Coors Light, so... 40 something days out to sea and you see a guy walking around with a bottle of you know Coors Light you know he, he definitely wow. got a few people there scared you, but you guys uh, are playing it safe Coors like, was it Coors we still Cutter? Uh, we're still enlisted so yeah <laughs> we can't talk about it probably was not the bad <laughs> probably not the fairest question to start with okay here we go. but uh, yeah on the, the Russian side I'd say anything that uh, you know doesn't isn't you made would with take a, uh, a beer that you could uh, like a really highly carbonated sour that you could shake up and explode and cause some problems. <laughs> <laughs> Sabotage. Sabotage. <laughs> Although inside of a submarine, that might be a bad idea. It's kind of a comic. Just uh, for anybody listening, this is Danny and Ryan, not, not Zach and Paul, <laughs> who, who did this segment. Okay. I, honestly, <laughs> though, if you get anybody in trouble here. If you had to bring a real beer underway, I'd say something low in alcohol content because your tolerance goes way down. Mm. But that, that, that's yeah. just, Smart answer. Session yeah. IPA, nice low ABV. So, there you go. Sour. It'll still you go. kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These questions. Are this bad. is okay. an awesome <laughs> question. What would you rather eat? Real armadillo cooked with high quality armadillo brewing company beer, or would you rather eat chicken cooked with natty light? 
You want to take this one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends. What's the armadillo been eating? I'll say it's been drinking your beer too. Whatever. That's fine. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Right. <laughs> Whatever armadillos eat, I don't even know. <laughs> we don't want to know what armadillos eat. <laughs> I'd take the armadillo. I, I told my wife the other day as I was driving, and said, "Just I was thinking of questions, and I said, have I ever eaten armadillo?" And she's like, "No, I don't Not think so." <laughs> she said, "You ate raccoon that one time." Yep. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But that was pretty good. Ooh. Most armadillo species forage in the early morning and evening hours for a variety of invertebrates and insects, including beetles, grubs, and worms. Whatever, I'd eat it. You know what? That's still probably better than Cooking the good chicken. Beer. That's better than yeah. the chicken you get at the grocery this store. Is <laughs> okay, this one's gonna be tough. If you can, if you can manage this one, I'll be impressed. Oh, the initials of your brewery are A, B, C. Yep. What would your brewery be called if its initials were X, Y, Z? <laughs> X Y Z. Huh. Somebody picked up on our marketing campaign. Come on, yeah, social, come on social media guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is all you, man. Xylophone oh. Yellow Zoo. I don't know. Can't use that one. That's my brewery. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a, I got the perfect word for Z. Yeah, I think I know what you're thinking. I was thinking of something along the time of the phrase of uh, xanthan yellow zebra. <laughs> That's pretty good. Xanthan, yeah, it was a, uh, a, a different shade of yellow. So, What's the uh, the military call letters? Do you guys do that? Like X, Y, and Z? X-ray, Yankee, Zulu. There you go. That would be perfect. That actually yeah. sounds yeah. kind of cool, yeah. 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 I was thinking something like examine, which I realize is not really an X. <laughs> <laughs> examine your Zimmergy. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Zimmergy for Zimmer those G. listening it's gotta out be there. Is it's got to be the, uh the scientific name for brewing, I think, or fermentation, something like yeah. that. Something like that. Whatever. All right. There's something told. Well, let's see. If the world should run out of kegs, growlers, barrels, bottles, cans, and normal ways of holding beer, how would you recommend, or what vessel would you uh, develop? Think or of a recommend new type of vessel. New type of vessel to consume beer. Within the bar or to distribute. You do. It was in the bar. Wait, just, it's your world. We punch just, bowl. Punch bowl. bowl. I was going to say a, a tap with a swipe card on it and just a hose comes down and you just, you know, for all, for all the minutes. Like, you know, I, I like that. I went on a cruise recently and they have beer stations on the boat. You just drink and, out of a hose. Uh, you, swipe, <laughs> no, you swipe your room card yep. and f- uh, pour as much beer as you want and yep. you get charged by the ounce that comes yep. out. But for real, for real, yeah. it didn't. I had like a like a booze package, so I didn't do it. But because um, I could just go get a beer that I I hate, I hate to say for free, but that I'd already paid for. It, that makes sense. <laughs> but there was like you'd be sitting there at lunch, and like at least once every ten minutes, someone would walk up and grab a cup and try to pour a beer, beer and then be disappointed <laughs> that like nothing came out. <laughs> there was all these just like discarded cups. Crazy. There's some bars and uh, breweries and stuff yep. that do that now. I want to say my sister told me about a place in Denver where you, it's like a growler store or something yep. like that where you can get by the ounce. But I think you'd have to pay for the card because they don't want you just getting a, a 200 ton. ounces of beer, you know, and just <laughs> go to town. <laughs> yes. All right. Now for the last part, it's beer associations. And so what this is, is I'm going to name a famous person or, or thing. And you are going to tell me a beer, a brewery, a beer type, the, the first beer that pops in your mind, or brewery or whatever, when I say the name. Associated to that okay. person or thing. We never said these were good segments. This is how we do it. Okay. <laughs> this, this is the parts that people listen to. Yeah. I'm just trying to All right, here we go. All right, what beer, brewery, or beer type would you associate with observational opportunist Jerry Seinfeld? Can you think of any funny names? Uh, I don't think he's that funny either, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> think of a non-funny beer name? Oh, What's any of the those? deal with IPA? <laughs> <laughs> do you want a beer or do you want a pine, so- pine cone so you cough syrup? <laughs> this sour beer is making me thirsty. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when I read through the plan, I thought that said Jerry Springer. Oh, that would have been a better one. Yeah, been any, a lot who's Jerry Springer? Jerry Springer? <laughs> 
Jerry <laughs> Springer. Gotta be like, what beer is Jerry Springer? It's got to be like some sort of malt liquor. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say something with bruised up in the name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Next one. Well-intentioned, well-inspecting, courageous collie Lassie. Do you know who that is? Yeah, Lassie. You, you don't Lassie? know Lassie? Nope. He's in the well? Lassie? Oh, oh there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> she... Uh, I'd have to go with either because the whole Lassie gets me on I'd start on the whole dog thing either our harmonious stout or the there we go yeah. Yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody goes their, their own, own. We or, 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 or bold no, city dukes. Works. Dukes. Yeah. dukes so you're you're, dukes you're thinking Lassie will make a dog friend yeah I just want to go on record that uh, two two uh, men that serve our country are suggesting that a dog consume alcohol right yeah. now. No, 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 no. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer. All right. We set them up for that. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to come back. All right, here we go. Well-proportioned country chantrice. How do you say that word? I wrote it. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. <laughs> I laughed out loud when I read that one. Well-proportioned Dolly Parton. Chantrice. Now we need a country beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a country beer? Some sort of blonde ale is what she would drink. A full body blonde ale. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that she would definitely get two growlers of it. Uh, All right, we're gonna move right along. See, I was I was gonna go with anything that was as real as you know she is, but <laughs> <laughs> something maybe a near beer. It's not really beer. Not really. Yeah. All right, presidential princely principalist John Fitzgerald Kennedy. What's JFK drinking, or what was he drinking? So morbid, jeez. Well, I mean, <laughs> was, was we usually do drinking? like kind of further back historical figures, but he's I guess it's been fifty years. Yeah, we can move on. Historical for me. I mean. Yes. <laughs> He looks like he was probably a Coors guy, honestly. Really? Yeah, I think no, so. It's from the, I think it was a the, the dynasty, the Kennedy family. I would have said like a Scotch, a Scotch barrel aged, anything like that. Oh, that's yeah. If if he wasn't sipping a, a sniffer of uh, well Kentucky bourbon, since it's you know America's yeah, yeah. greatest liquor, maybe something from Boston Beer Company or something. like Maybe that. he yeah. would have been uh, if he did drink lagers. I bet he drank something fancy like Stella. Boston, if you Fancy in quotes. Going down the Boston theme, we could do the uh, the Sam Adams Utopia. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. That's a good association. All right. Silly, sweet. <laughs> Stupid. All right. Silly, sea dwelling scrubber, SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. Is he even old enough to drink? <laughs> He's been on the TV for like 21 years at least, right? <laughs> it's not like we said Maggie Almost. Simpson. <laughs> SpongeBob has a full time job. I think he's. <laughs> I think Maggie Simpson's older than SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maggie Simpson's yeah. definitely older than SpongeBob. But, uh, oh man. She doesn't even blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make the obvious joke. <laughs> don't make the obvious joke. Remember how I said, like, the, the podcast would kind of slowly go down? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how anyway, one mean. beer. One beer. SpongeBob. Uh. I'd say something to match him, like a yellow color, like sort of a pale ale, some of, some along those lines, right. or, or completely. What's the opening line of the song? Are you ready, who kids? Who lives in a After pineapple? Who lives in a pineapple yeah. under the sea? Sweetwater, Cohen Coastal, Pineapple IPA. There you go. Boom. You might be a little too strong for him, you. Know? Yeah. Yeah, he probably needs just soak it up. Something that served at Weenie Hut Juniors, maybe. Ooh, that's Ooh. a good question. Good future question for Cast Me Another. What's that? You kind of. Like last week, you said, "What beer do you like so much that you would drink it out of a golf hole?" Do you like? What Did beer? I really say that last year? <laughs> last yeah. one. Oh, what beer do you like so much that you, if somebody spilled it onto a sponge, you would still squeeze it out and drink it? <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not talking like a brand new sponge. I'm talking like yeah, just spill it on the sponge that's sitting on the counter. There's probably you know, there probably, probably is beer in still. your sponge <laughs> on the counter. <laughs> I know a lot of tickers that would happily squeeze a sponge into their mouth to get that rating. <laughs> okay, we're going to move right along. <laughs> All right. Oh, our new favorite segment. Oh, craft beer dad joke. I probably should have thought of one. Okay. No, I thought of one from, from last week. Oh, okay. Okay. Can you work in them? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's this, it's this same bar, right? You know what we need to do is we need to get... I need to ask one of the local bars if they want to be the craft beer dad joke of the month sponsor. 
So it yes, could be like yeah. So we do another to do animal walks in the blue cafe because you said all these talking animals go to the same bar. Okay, let's see. Anyway, so a pirate walks mm-hmm. into future to be named bar that's going to sponsor. So pirate walks into a bar, and there's one weird thing about this pirate. He's got one of those giant uh, ship steering <laughs> wheels coming out of his pants. So he walks up to the bar. <laughs> this is in St. Mary's. And he says, uh, Do you have any armadillo? Uh, was it Harmonia Stout? Yeah. The bartender says, Sure. He said, Do you got that rum barreled? The bartender's like, Sure, we got that. So you rum barreled it in the future. So, anyway, he's sitting there and he's drinking, drinking his rum barreled Harmonia Stout from Delicious from Armadillo Brewing Company. He's drinking, he's drinking. The bartender. Who encounters weird people all the time at this bar? He says, "You know, I just, I just gotta ask you something. Do, you, do you, do you know that you got a steering wheel coming out of your pants?" And the bar goes, "All right, I know, and it's driving me nuts." <laughs> <laughs> but <I'm, laughs> and that is uh, this month's craft beer dad joke of the month. I have actually heard that joke before. Yeah. Probably yeah. everybody has. Yeah. I mean, it's a dad joke. It's been around oh, yeah. for a long time. All right, drives me nuts. That's a little <laughs> risque for our podcast. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. To all the children listening with their cars, he's talking about nuts and bolts. Children should not be listening to the podcast. <laughs> if you are a child and listening to this, you should go outside and play or do something fun. You should not be listening to a craft beer podcast. All right, I think that wraps up episode 10 with Armadillo Brewing Company. Thanks, guys, for coming on. It was a blast. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Oh, oh, no, I'm, I'm empty. Oh, oh, it doesn't right. matter. They wouldn't have known on the, on the recording if I didn't say anything. Oh, I didn't That's drink. True. That's true. But uh, we thank you guys again, and we're going to be looking for you around September to be kicking it in the high gear. Yep. And uh, in the meantime... Like these guys on Facebook, they're great guys. Um, the beer we had, very promising future as far as brewers. You guys want to help finish this off? I'm good. Sure. Yeah. Do you guys uh, tell us, uh, Paul, where they can find you on social media? So either you can find us at on Facebook by searching uh, Armadillo Brewing Company or facebook.com forward slash Armadillo's Rule or also Twitter, same, so twitter.com forward slash Armadillo's Rule. We're looking up Armadillo Brewing. At, at Armadillo's Rule? At, at Armadillo Brewing. At Armadillo Brewing. Yep. Very cool. And of course, armadillobrewing.net for our website. Armadillobrewing.net. We'll be the pushing you guys on anti brew yep. And Danny, talk about our anti brew social media. Yes. Yeah, so, as always, our most active uh, social media tends to be Facebook. Search for anti Uh Of course, our favorite catchphrase we haven't said yet this month is... Just Google it. <laughs> Just Google it. We haven't Just said that. I thought you were going to say, pull, uh, pour up a seat. Pour up a seat. We haven't worked that in yet. You're blowing our cover. If anybody's listened this far, there. <laughs> 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 anyway, Facebook at uh, Antibroom, Twitter at Antibroom, Patreon at Antibroom, Instagram at Antibroom. Ours is pretty easy. They're all Antibroom. Yep. A N T E B R E W U M. There's only one Antibroom out there. And we're it. We're it. And uh, as always, thank you to our sponsors, Daniel Opal for the awesome design, <clears throat> and Five Points uh, Fine Wine and Spirits. Uh, Nancy and Tom always helping us out and. Uh, we appreciate everything uh, they do for us and yeah. taking a chance on us. And uh, go out, support your local beer scene wherever you are. If you're in Kingsland or Valdosta, Thomasville, Macon, wherever, uh, there's a lot of hardworking guys who are, are counting on us and uh, who deserve our support. And uh, we'll be uh, coming down to Kingsland and uh, as soon as you guys are open, uh, yeah. we'll be excited to be some of your first customers, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, also, my uh, normal uh, disclaimer slash uh, good common sense, fiesta responsibly, you know, don't drink and drive, have a, have a driver. Like today I drank a little bit more than usual, but I have a driver, so <laughs> it's all good. It must be uh, nice to be that wealthy, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Maria. The craft, the, the craft <laughs> here in limo is going yes. to pick up Ryan later. So, uh, uh, but, you know, be, be, be smart, be sensible. Uh, don't, uh, don't underage drink if you're uh, tempted to do that. Um, especially if you're SpongeBob or whoever, but <laughs> yes, responsibly. 
Uh, next show, uh, we're going to have a drought for a little bit. That's why we did two in a row. I am out of town for a month for summer teaching. So unless Ryan wants to visit me in Rome, Georgia and interview the brew pub there, then you guys won't, we won't have another podcast till at least after July 15th. Um, we'll anyway, try to do one right around July 15th. When you get yeah, back. we'll do it quick right when I get back. Yeah. Anybody that's uh, watching live or watching the YouTube video, if I get it up here soon, um, we'll get on all the podcast apps as soon as we can, uh, depending on if our podcast host allows us. Uh, long story. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to do in July. We may uh, have Georgia Beer Company on again to yeah. check in with them. Uh, we're also working, still uh, trying to get in touch with uh, Pretoria Fields in Albany and the unnamed brewery in Brunswick to get them yeah. on the show as well. Or if you have any ideas, uh, shoot us an email or Facebook message or whatever. Absolutely. We'd like to know what you guys think or what you guys would like us to to work on. It's uh, it's about all of us, and we want to, you know, it's a small but mighty South Georgia beer community. So yeah. we want to work together, help each other out, and if if you guys have an idea for a show, or let us know. Send us an email. Yeah. Thanks again to Armadillo Brewing Company. Yeah, it was Ooh, great. You guys should come Appreciate on again. Appreciate you guys coming oh, that's up. Great. Right Fantastic time. After you open, come back and uh, talk about your place. Yeah. And uh, as always, peace out, everybody. We'll see you guys later. See you next month.